All right, this is your brother Aisha Yard coming at you with an in transit video. But before I begin, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakak Wadash. Double honors to the apostles of the great millstone, which I learned this truth from. Honors to the elders and brothers out there pushing this word to the four corners of the earth with their truth and sincerity. And Shalom to the Aqua that's listening and learning. So today's in transit video is going to be about vexation. Now I'm going to do a part two to this. Because I had some scriptures uh, that I wanted to bring out and everything like that. and uh, But while I was out driving, I figured why not, you know, to speak on it for a little bit. Because it was fresh on my mind. Because I got inspired to do this video because of watching Elder Kazak from Mississippi. One of his uh, recent live streams. And uh, just going through everyday life experiences, you know. It's a lot of things that... The most I will put you through that he know is going to affect you. And he wants you to go through these things so you can become a better uh, man. All right. And, you know, um, it's tough because we know that we're under the curses and we know that we're going to go through certain things and everything like that. And we expect it to happen. And you would figure since, you know, these tough times are coming, you would, you know, uh, be prepared for it. You really you really wouldn't worry about it. You have a cold heart to a certain situations and everything like that. But the reality is the most I is going to make sure that you go through these situations. All right. And he's going to make sure that you feel these situations so you can see how wicked this place is. And you can actually build your spirit up from that experience. All right. You know, one of the main things that brothers go through is dealing with women, man. And this is a topic that you know, a lot of people, you know, uh, we try to avoid because, you know, we always, you know, because when you come up with, when we start speaking about women, that topic can go on and on and on and on and on. And it, and it uh, causes a lot of demons to come out of the woodwork and everything like that, because a lot of these women really don't know their role on this earth. OK, one of the main things that I always say. You know, I'll be like, man, I'll be telling, you know, certain women, I'll be like, look, when we get into the kingdom, there's not going to be a such thing as male friends or a male having female friends. You're not going to see that, man. You're not going to see that at all. You're not going to have to worry about phones and women going through your phone and them worry about what you doing or you, you ain't got to worry about what your woman is doing or anything like that. I'm like, man, it's not going to be like that. Men are going to have multiple wives. And if they want to speak to another woman outside of their wives, not on a sexual level, of course, but if they just want to speak to another woman, you know, just for a conversation or something, they have their family, man. They have their mother, their auntie, their cousins, sisters, so forth and so on. All right. And vice versa when it comes to the women. Women will not have male friends. All right. It's not going to go down like that. You're going to have your husband to speak to. All right. That's it. Your uncle, your father, your cousins, your brothers, so forth and so on. That's it. And one of the main things, you know, that uh, we, a lot of brothers always say, we be like, man, for a lot of these women that claim that they're in the truth, this is one of the things that you have to uh, remember. All right. So when you come into this truth, you got to drop a lot of things, man. <laughs> because a lot of these women out here, man, they have a lot of male friends. All right. And the scriptures say that's the jealousy of a man. And the jealousy of a man can create that vengeance, of, that spirit of vengeance. All right. Because that's exactly how the Most High is. And we are walking in the likeness of the Most High. All right. So when we approach a woman or whatever, and she just be like, yeah, you know, I ain't talking to nobody and this and that and so forth and so on. But we see that you're texting somebody or, you know, uh, you're engaging with somebody. But you just be like, well, I'm not having sex with them. We be like, we don't give a fuck. <laughs> All right. We be like, you have to drop that friend. There is that. That's that's wicked, man. Wicked. And, you know, because we try to tell these women. We be like, look, man, these men out here don't give a fuck if you in a relationship or not. Yeah, how would y'all call this generation an adulterous generation? This is a generation that's ready to have sex with your woman, man. 
They're ready. They do not care if you're with somebody. And a lot of these women don't understand that. And so when certain brothers go through certain situations or whatever, and they feel that, they get enraged, all right? But the thing is, we understand that we have to endure this, man. We have to endure this. This is one of the re one of the reasons why we can't wait to get out of here. We cannot wait to get out of here, man, because we can't wait for our women to be in order. These women are out of pocket, man. Point blank, period. All right? Then on top of that, then you got to go home. Then you got to deal with whatever other issues you got going outside of the, uh, you know, your, your, your woman or whatever, your family and everything like that. And you just got to deal with it, man. And this is one of the reasons why, you know, shit, brothers drink. We're not alcoholics. <laughs> We're not alcoholics. But at the end of the day, man, hey, man, we, we sip, man. Hey, man, yeah, how was Shad, you know, was uh, drinking wine every day, man? Dealing because he couldn't deal with the, the wickedness and the folly of Israel, man, of Yasserala. Kept looking at his own people. It's like, man, you people are, are through, man. And that's the same way that we look at you two thirds. Here it is. I just got a text or a message or whatever from a friend of mine. And it was a post where these women are literally getting their baby hair tattooed on them. They're getting tattoos to look like their baby hair on so they can get it on the top of their head, man. This generation is through. Point blank, period. And we can't wait to get the fuck out, man. We can't wait to get out, man. Every single day, we hope Jacob's trouble begins. A lot of people be like, you know, not always say, oh, man, it's not going to happen in our lifetime or whatever and everything like that because, you know, they don't really think that society can collapse this soon because everything seems like it's in order. But what do the scriptures say? The scriptures say when they promise you peace and safety, then that's when sudden destruction comes. All right. That's what the scriptures say. And what are they doing right now, man? They're promising you a good time. They're telling you you can be cured from the, the thing that's out here. They're giving you, you know, certain freedoms. They're allowing you to go back into the restaurants, allowing you to go back into certain places and everything like that. All of these movies getting ready to come out, video games and all of this, man. Super Bowl getting ready to happen. Everything looks good right now, don't it? Sounds like peace and safety to me, don't it? But what the scriptures say? This sudden destruction coming. And guess what? We want that destruction to come, man. Because we getting tired of being around you people. We getting tired of being around you two thirds, man. We getting tired of being around wicked women. We can't even be around our own women because our own women are foul, man. Foul. Can't even be around them, man. <laughs> like the brother uh Yaramaya from the Chicago camp. So lucky if I got your name wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. But what he say? He like, man, we deal with the White Castle. Why did he say that, man? Because these these women outside the heathen nations will treat you better than our own women. Our own women don't fucking get it. They don't get it. They don't understand the terms submissive, obedient, modest. They don't understand those things, man. The woman was put here to be our help. You are ours, man. Like the scriptures say, once he get a wife, he beginneth the possession. You belong to us. Us, man. All right? Your desire is towards your husband. Genesis 3 and 16. Your desire is towards your husband, man. Every day when you wake up, you're supposed to make sure that your husband do not have feeble knees. Okay? You're supposed to get up every morning, make sure you're doing what you're supposed to do so your husband cannot have a care in the world, pretty much, man. He can come home and have a smile on his face. He ain't got to worry about sitting down and worrying about, you know, what, do, what, what is my woman doing while I'm not around? There's a reason why the scriptures say keep your woman in straightly, straightly. What does that mean, man? You got to keep an eye on her at all times because these women are easy to slip up, man. All right. 
And this is why when we go out in the highways and the byways, we make these videos and everything like that, man. This is why we lift up our voices like a trumpet because we don't care about how you feel, man. This is the most high speaking through us. This is his anger speaking through us, man. He's getting tired of what's going on down here. And this is why a lot of you, you women out here are being judged. And you uh, wicked two-third men out here, man. Because y'all don't get it. Y'all don't understand that it's time to get right. Y'all don't understand that it's time to repent. Repent, man. How hard is it? You trying to tell me the things of this world got a grasp on you so much that you can't even fucking change? <laughs> Salakia for my temper, man. But, it, you know, shit that's pissed me off. You're trying to tell me the information is out here with these holidays. They telling you that these holidays are pagan. They telling you the food is fucked up. You can go to the store. You can read the damn ingredients. Look it up for yourself. It'll tell you what's in it. But you're trying to tell me you got so much of a grasp on this world that you can't even follow the Lord. Not even try. A lot of y'all don't even want to try, man. Y'all just like, nah, we don't care about the Lord. And it shows. What does scripture say? It's the, the scripture say the fear of the Lord is a treasure. It is above silver and gold, man. It is above silver and gold. When you have the fear of the Lord, you have a treasure, something that's hard to get. Understand that. If you found a big ass treasure chest right now full of gold, you'll be like, what you will say? This is a miracle. This is a miracle. It's a miracle for one third of our people to have the fear of the Lord upon them, man. And the thing is, two thirds of our people, they're not gonna have the fear of the Lord upon them until they realize that they're about to be judged, man. When they realize they're in concentration camps, when they realize that martial law busted up in that house, when they realize that they're about to starve, when they realize that there's two lions getting ready to attack them, when they realize there's a drone flying over them ready to shoot them down, that's when they're going to have to fear the Lord, man. And guess what? The Lord going to turn your back on you right there and then, man. And he going to allow you to be slaughtered. Slaughtered. You know? <laughs> and like I said, man, it, 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 it's just, like I said, it's just vexing. Because, you know, like Kazak said, man, we got to go through this reality. We have to go through this reality. And, you know, we endure it because the scriptures say endure our harness as a good soldier, right? We don't allow these things to affect us to the point where we fall out the truth. That's the point. We don't allow these things to get to us to the point where we just like, man, I can't do the work no more. And then we understand that we are not supposed to be carnal. We're spiritual people now, man. We understand what's going on. We are not in the matrix. But at the same time, we do have to deal with the situations. And that's the messed up part. But at the same time, it's good. Because the more that we endure through this, that's the more hope we have. Because we're showing the Lord that we're able to go through these hard times and still exalt Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shai, man. And that's the point. That's the point. You know, we get tired of looking at <laughs> walking down the street. Every single female out here is hoes. These hoes are bitches. <laughs> These hoes are bitches. We getting tired of seeing this, man. As it's, it's fucked up when you know you gotta go to a store and buy a rubber because if you have sex with this woman, it's possibly that something, some type of illness can come, <laughs> can, can come on you, man. What type of society is this? These females out here talking about making videos with no shame, talking about, yeah, man, I be sleeping with about 500 men a week. God damn. We can't trust none of these women, man. None of them. So at the end of the day, we got to do what we got to do for the Lord. This is what brings us our comfort, man. This is what gives us hope. Because we read the scriptures, we do these videos, and we around the brothers. We are around the brothers, man. When we get around the brothers, just like, you know, I'll be texting certain brothers from GMS Chicago. You know, I'm certain, uh, I'm friends with certain brothers on Facebook. 
you know, uh, from different GMS camps and everything like that. You know, of course, I, I teach with my brother because I've known him my whole life. All right. We, we uh chat and everything like that. And when you know, when you talk to the brothers, when you speak to the brothers, man, it gives you comfort because you have somebody that's in a in a in the same uh, in a like mind like you, you know. And that gives you that gives you um, it helps you relax, man. It helps you relax because you got to realize that we're not the only ones that's going through something, you know. All brothers are going through something because that's like the scriptures say the. The, uh, whoever the Lord, whoever the Lord loves, He chastens. So the Lord puts us all through something, all right. But when we speak to each other, hey, we realize like, hey, man, we are not alone. And that's what building up the house of David is, is about, man. It's preaching His truth the correct way, all right. Not twisting up the scriptures, saying Revelation thirteen and sixteen is speaking about embargoes or sleeping with white women and all these other things, man. We go out there and we teach it to go the correct way, all right? And we endure our afflictions. We endure them, man. And we do exactly that, all right? So, like I said, you know, I ain't want to make this too long, but sometimes, you know, uh, doing these in-transit videos, it can help, you know, it can help you out just, you know, so you can just get some words out and everything because... <laughs> Cause you know, at the end of the day, man, you know, you can't really um, speak about this to anybody else, man. Only only people, you can, like I said, you can speak to about it is brothers. But hey, man, sometimes you're not around them, man. Sometimes you you're not around them, and you just want to get things off of your chest. So hey, man, why not make it edifying? <laughs> you know, why not make it edifying and go ahead and just do what we gotta do? You know, cause at the end of the day, hey, we gotta be on fire. We got to be on fire. We got to we gotta feed the flock. All right? So, I'm going to end it right there, man. So, hey, I hope this is edifying. Salakia, so like you know, if my temper got ahead of me and everything like that, you know, it, it is what it is. Hey, that's what the spirit, that's how the spirit wanted it to come out. So, hey, we just going to let it be, man. So, with that, I'm going to say, call Halayim, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rekak Wadash. Double honors to the apostles of the great millstone, which I learned this truth from. Honors to the elders and brothers out there pushing this word through the four corners of the earth within truth and sincerity. And shalom to the aqua that's listening and learning. And Yahweh Ratzazah, I'll be back with another lesson. Keep pushing, Yasserala. Keep pushing. We almost out of here. Shalom.